Hey everybody, welcome back to the Scheming Skelly YouTube channel. My name is Jordan. I want to talk today about the PlayStation 5 Pro and the sticker shock that a lot of people are having. Uh, I am one of those people who had that sticker shock. Uh, $700 for a PlayStation is pretty insane, especially uh, as someone who owned the PlayStation 4 Pro before and realized that I really didn't get anything extra for my money, uh, it was going to be a very hard sell for me anyways to want to get the PlayStation 5 Pro. Like, I think most people are in that same boat. Uh, not only right now, you know, are things a mess financially for most of the people in this world and especially in this country. Um, we're, we're in a situation where you have computers uh, that are more powerful. You're starting to see systems that had exclusive games that are now available on those computers. And people are starting to kind of wonder why, if things are going digital, would you want to own a digital system when you could just have a computer and download digital games or use things like Steam? And I'm kind of in that camp right now where I don't really care what the future holds for the technology and video games and the graphics. I've been kind of going backwards. I bought a DS and I've been playing games I missed for that system. I've been playing and buying a lot of games for systems that at one time I didn't think I really had an interest in. Um, and I'll be honest, like I can't see the reason for these slight upgrades costing this amount of money. And I wanna take a look at the PlayStation 5 Pro that could have been. I really want to take a look at what we should have gotten, what I think most people would have expected Sony to give us at this big PlayStation 5 Pro event that they did. I say big event, but it was just really this, this stream that was very underwhelming. So the first thing I want to take notice of and, and let you know if you may not have known is like this is a huge year for PlayStation. Like this is the 30th anniversary of PlayStation. And I really expected that Sony and their PlayStation division would have had a major announcement about the PlayStation 5 Pro that had to do with the 30th anniversary. Now, some of these things I'm gonna talk about may seem crazy to you, um, and maybe they are. Maybe they are crazy. Maybe they're uh, wishes and hopes and dreams out of left field that you know weren't possible. But I was talking to my brother about this, and I said one thing I was really shocked about is that they didn't use this 30th anniversary as a way to bridge the gap between the past and the future of PlayStation. Now, what I mean by that is 30 years is a really long time and a really solid history that PlayStation has had over that period of time. If you think of all of the games that we've got, the systems and the impact they had on the world and our lives and uh, you know the, the times when these systems came out, specifically with the PlayStation 2 and uh, so many of the games that had to be changed because of 9-11, um, there, there's so many things that have happened in 30 years that PlayStation has had a major part of in the video game industry. And with all that being said, I guess that I just expected something a lot more, you know, overwhelming than underwhelming. And one of those things would have been a PlayStation Pro system that celebrates the 30 years of PlayStation. I would have expected to see uh, a system similar to what Jim Ryan was given, the uh, ex-PlayStation CEO, I would have expected a, a system that was classic gray with the rainbow PlayStation logo, a classic gray controller, um, even maybe some cool design that harkened back to each system that existed before we hit PlayStation 5. Because I think going forward, you're gonna be you're gonna see the shift, and we're already seeing it. PlayStation 6 may not have disc-based games. They may not have any kind of physical media at all. And I think an awesome way to bridge that gap between the past and the present and what's going to be the future would have been to make a system, PlayStation 5 Pro, that could have played all PlayStation games in the back catalog of the PlayStation main home system, you know, the main consoles. So it would have PS1, 2, 3, and 4 functionality backwards compatibility in the box, and maybe even more wishful thinking, if they could have at least made an announcement where they said, hey, listen, 
the PlayStation 5 games you own, sure, they're going to look better. But the PlayStation 4 games, you're not expecting this. They are all going to run, for the ones that were designed for it at least, at a you know solid 1080p 60 frames per second or a solid 4K 60, maybe uh, 1080 at 120. Like there are ways to do this. There are games that were already created uh, with that technology advancement in mind because they knew that the technology was going to be more advanced in the future. So I, I feel that if they would have done something like that, a $700 price point wouldn't have seemed so crazy to a lot of people. If you had a system that made it so that all the games that ever existed for PlayStation home consoles would have played on the PS5, that would have been incredible. Um, and like I said, maybe that's wishful thinking, maybe that's asking too much, but they could have done something to, to commemorate 30 years of PlayStation and given the consumers a reason to want to go out and spend that money. But at its current price point, I don't think anyone can really look at that price and say, what I'm seeing here on the, you know, on these videos that Sony showed, I, I'm not seeing a $700 price point on this. I'm not seeing why I should spend an extra $300 on that system. You know, people who are like really into technology and really into Sony, kind of like the people who are like Apple people that are really into everything Apple. I could see these diehards going after that uh, and, and the price point not minding to them. But I think the majority of the consumers even had such a hard time finding a PlayStation 5 when they weren't available. And then the games that came out really weren't games that are only on PlayStation that you couldn't get anywhere else. There's really only a few. Uh, most of the other games have been available for other consoles or for PC. We've seen a lot of Sony titles moving over to the PC. We've seen Xbox doing the same thing where a lot of their games are available on a console or a, a computer, you know, day one. So uh, with PlayStation, it had been more timed exclusives, but like Final Fantasy 16 is a great example. There haven't been any games that were like killer games. Oh, uh, the Demon Souls remake too, I guess. That that is only on PS5. But short of Demon Souls and Astrobot, there really isn't much. And I think a lot of people are looking at that now and saying, if I didn't have a PS5 before and I want to buy one now, why would I spend an extra three hundred dollars for something that's a slight upgrade to what I can spend, you know, four hundred dollars on? Like it doesn't really make any sense. So I'm kind of bummed out that the 30th anniversary uh, for PlayStation isn't, isn't going to be reflected in any meaningful hardware that we've seen so far. Maybe they'll do a controller, maybe they'll do a, a, a system that represents it, but I think doing something like the PS5 Pro would have been uh, their place and, and the right time to do something to commemorate 30 years of PlayStation. Anyways, have a fantastic day and we'll uh, talk again soon. Take care.